Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here. So, <coughs> next slide, please. Next slide, please. Look at this. Cute, isn't it? This was, do you recognize that? This was Google's self-driving car project, which today is part of Waymo's automation technology. Waymo has a clear mission to make it safe and easy for everyone to get around. Within automation, this is what many people talk about being the coolest thing you can work with. And I agree, because this is what I work with. Beautiful, isn't she? <clears throat> she's called Vera. She's not just beautiful, in fact, she's also very smart. And she's very strong. Vera is a fully autonomous and electric transport solution. She's got no human driver, but lots of brains. In fact, she's got the brain booth on board and off board. She's also controlled or supervised through a control center. Vera has the potential to contribute to sustainable society. She's gonna make transportation safer, cleaner, and more efficient. A better word. Automation is a game changer. How many times haven't I heard that truck business is a male's work? <clears throat> Typically, people refer to men driving trucks, men building trucks, and men selling trucks. With new technology, this brings new opportunities and also challenges. The women I meet at work, they love their job because it's challenging, it's fun, and it requires new skills. How many, have thought, how many of you have thought about driverless vehicles and how are they really going to work? Well, that's part of my responsibility within Volvo Group. <coughs> I am working within automation, leading a team, developing the strategic part of the autonomous brain. We develop not only driverless trucks, but also driverless buses that's gonna carry our children to school. Mining trucks that will run in tough and rough environments, deep underground. Now, how did I end up working with this? Am I an expert in artificial intelligence? No. Am I an expert in mapping? No. Am I a world-famous programmer? No. I'm obviously not a man. <clears throat> Automation is complex. In order for us to, to manage this complex technology and develop it properly, we need to have combination of different technologies, everything from artificial intelligence to maps, advanced programming, and also, can you imagine? Data, data analytics. So, it is going to be a challenge, and in order for us to manage this, we need to manage complex, complex challenges. I guess you can imagine some of the challenges that we need to consider. If we are to have driverless vehicles on the streets, we need to manage massive amount of data. 
I'm talking about big, big data. Data such as traffic information, road mapping information, not only two-dimensional maps, but also three-dimensional maps. We need to know the heights of bridges. After all, we don't want our autonomous vehicle or bus to run into a bridge that's too low for it, right? And what about weather data? What do you do when you're out driving and it starts to rain, snow, or even ice on the streets? You slow down the vehicles, and that's exactly what we need to secure our autonomous vehicles to do as well. Now, with all this data and, and connectivity, cybersecurity is going to be key for us. Last year, in the UK, the National Health Services <clears throat> was crippled by one of the largest hacks in history. And last month, Facebook announced that, <clears throat> that hackers accessed personal information of 50 million users. It's not a question if systems will be hacked. It's a question of when they will be hacked. And we need to secure that we have super secure systems. If now technological challenges are complex, so are the social ones. Have you ever thought of what automation will bring in terms of legal aspects? There will need to become new laws. New laws will need to be passed. For example, what happens if there is an accident? Who is responsible for the accident? Is it the owner of the vehicle, the company, or is it the person who designed the brain of it? Let me give you a very extreme example. I want you now to imagine yourself being a driver of a bus, a bus full of pensioners. He's dr you're driving in a very narrow street, very busy street. In front of you comes a man with his stroller and a child in it. You have a choice to make. What will be your choice? Will you run straight ahead? And that will have implications, right? Or will you swerve your bus towards the building block? And that will also have implications. What will your decision be? Save the child and the, ba and the, and the father? Or save the pensioners? Imagine the decisions we need to program our vehicles with. <coughs> A human person, when you are driving, there's not much time for a moral decision. It's more a reaction. And when we program the vehicles, the vehicle will know exactly when and what to do what. It will be pre-programmed. So what is the decision that we will program our vehicles with? So it is complex. And how are we going to manage this complexity then? Well, one of my favorite terms is CQ. You have IQ and you have EQ. But there is another term, CQ. C stands for complexity. 
You probably heard the, the phrase, can't see the wood for all the trees, right? So CQ is about being able to see the wood. In fact, not only to see the wood, but also to see that the wood lies beside a river. And beyond that, you have the mountain. It's about a helicopter perspective. And in a global environment, it's about a satellite perspective. So I like to see CQ as the ability to connect the dots. I love to connect the dots. <laughs> but the dots, the information about the dots comes from my team. So if I am to manage my CQ, I need to manage my team. And in order for me to get the right information, correct information and honest information from my team, is for me to create an environment built on trust and a no-blame atmosphere. There is no template for developing autonomous vehicles. We don't have all the answers today. So we need to know, or I need to know, both the good news and the bad news. If I get to hear the bad and the good news, I will be able to connect the dots and to see the bigger picture. And I will know that we will succeed. <coughs> so will we succeed? I often get to hear good news and bad news. Last this Monday, I sat with some of my team members and they share this good news and bad news. <coughs> and one person said to me, Pernilla, we are so strong. We can do magic. Imagine the feeling I felt when I heard this. So with that said, this is just the beginning of the future transportation. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>